um, definite integrals involving substitution, uh, integration by substitution. I've got example 12 and 13 uh, already done. If you haven't watched them, maybe check out example 12 for sure, because we're working out a substitution, plus we're also working out new limits in terms of, in this case, u. So we've got an interesting integration going on, lots of things. We've got uh, upper and lower limits here, and we've also got um, quite an interesting expression to try and integrate. We're told that the substitution x equals sine u would just make it all nice and easy. Let's trust that and go ahead and try and explore how we can do that. Um, we want to look at substituting uh, all these 1 minus x and 1 minus x squared for sine u in a moment. Uh, but let's also in, uh, differentiate dx with respect to u. That will sign u will become cos u, and therefore dx is equal to cos u du. So what we're looking for is a way to, we're going to substitute dx for cos u du when the time comes. We're also uh, then going to think, well, can we uh, do that? I think quite quickly we can see that we can swap things in. Uh, our numerator becomes, instead of 1 minus x, 1 minus the sine of u divided by the square root of 1 minus sine squared u. And du, uh, or dx rather, becomes cos u du. Like that. So we've managed to come up with substitutions for all of the elements, the numerator, denominator, and then the dx. Again, the one thing that's missing are our limits. So we started off... with uh, x equals negative a half, and also then x equals 1 as our upper limit. So what have we got? We've got x equals the sine of u. In other words, um, sine u equals negative a half. So u is the inverse sine of negative a half. Uh, we're going on the basis that uh, a half, the, the sine of uh, 30 degrees is a half, or pi over 6. Uh, because it's negative, uh, then what we want to do is to come up with a value uh, that's going to be consistent with that. Uh, so we're going to look at... Wh why am I saying it's negative? Ah, it's not even... It's just a mark on my board. Okay, well, there we go. Pay attention. That's me mark on... Maybe you can't see it. Um, that's not very professional. Uh, x equals a half. Right, okay, it makes it a wee bit easier. Uh, therefore, if sine of u is a half, then that's pi over 6. Now we keep it in a uh, radian measure, not degrees, please. Um, that was meant to be my quadrant diagram, by the way. Uh, and if x equals 1, x equals sine u. So sine u is equal to 1. Therefore, u is equal to... 90 degrees or pi over 2. So, uh, my new limits are instead of a half down at the bottom, uh, pi over 6. And instead of uh, 1 at the top, pi over 2. When you do in the new limits here, it is possible that the what was the lower or smaller value becomes the larger value in your substitution. That's just the way it goes. You keep them in the same place, though. You always keep the, if you, the one you're substituted for, the lower one stays in the lower place. So, uh, we've got our new limits in terms of u. We've got this interesting uh, expression here, which we haven't yet simplified. So, let's do it. So, we've got pi over 6 and pi over 2. This denominator here, um, 1 minus sine squared u is the same as cos squared u, and then the square root of cos squared u is just cos u. So that all simplifies quite nicely. We've still got 1 minus sine u as our numerator, but look here, I've got cos u du, which is multiplying, they cancel out, and I'm left with the integration 1 minus the sine of u du uh, between pi over 6 and pi over 2 and that's my integration
I can do that. So we're integrating with respect to u, so 1 becomes u, and negative sine u differentiated or integrated with respect to u uh, will become uh, sine u integrates to negative cos u, so we'll have plus cos u from pi over 2 at the top and pi over 6. Right, substituting in, uh, for pi over 2 first of all, that's pi over 2 plus the cos of pi over 2 minus, substituting in for pi over 6, pi over 6 plus the cos pi over 6 and that gives us two uh, values here, fractions in terms of pi, so that's, uh, that's 3 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6, that's my two uh, pi values here, and then we've got cos of pi over 2 is 0, cos of 90 is 0, and then I've got minus the cos of pi over 6, uh, the cos of 30 degrees of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, and so we end up with our fractions working out as 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3, minus root 3 over 2. That's the exact value. The exact value of what? Well, we started off with uh, the integral from a half to 1 of 1 minus x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx is equal to Okay, and that's me just, it's always good to write back in what you started with so that um, it's kind of, it would be a bit obvious, it's a bit squint, my apologies. So there's our exact value. Again, we're uh, thinking about different ways in which we can use trig identities uh, to simplify the integration and then we're using our new limits in order to substitute and find an exact value. So hopefully that's... Uh, kind of makes sense. You can go and practice some of these and see how it works out for you.